Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Model Craft bench for a little quick inbox of this Hobby 2000 Arado 234B-2. Um, first off then, quick apology for the gap in transmissions. I've been very busy both with real life and indeed in my job. Uh, lots going on, lots going on, lots going on and in addition to that um, there's building work going on around me in my home here. The um, the houses are all being upgraded so there's lots of background noise happening all the time which is making it hard for me to find a slot in which I can record and to be honest and you can probably hear somebody drilling right now I've got to the point where I thought to hell with it I want to get some videos out so if there is any background noise around I apologize but um, better that than no videos at all so today then we're going to have a, a look an inbox look at this hobby 2000 kit now new to me hobby 2000 they sort of popped up fairly recently and appear to be doing reboxes mostly of Hasegawa kits but at essentially very attractive prices so they've got new decal sets in there uh, new artwork etc but it's the same old Hasegawa plastic um, but as I say just weirdly quite a lot cheaper than Hasegawa themselves sell things for and, and, and obviously in many cases you can't even get a lot of the kits a lot of the time anyway so I saw this this was on I got this from uh, models for sale from Vince. I think if memory serves it was some around about £16.99 which you know is pretty reasonable um, and it's a fairly interesting prototype and also the box art is quite uh, intriguing isn't it and this is done in the style like Dora Wings and such where the, the subject is glossy and actually very, very slightly embossed and then you've got some sort of plans in the background it's very attractive quite classy in my opinion uh, it's quite a large box for what isn't a very large aircraft in all fairness and there's a little bit of history on the back here on the side here I'll just get that where it's in frame have a little read of that it's got interesting stuff I shan't bore you all by reading it out verbatim but there you go so let's have a look what we get in here first and foremost having just stated <laughs> Hobby 2000 do a lot of ASMR alert Hasegawa stuff um, this is actually a dragon kit it's not necessarily a bad thing really is it but then again sometimes it is so let's get it out and have a look it's a spectacular, spectacular bag cutting failure there nice one Jen so here's what you get. Put those aside. Basically, three main parts sprues. Uh, I know that technically they're runners or frames, but let's let's stick to sprues to avoid a uh, confusion because that is what we all call them, isn't it? So, sprue A. Clearly, fuselage halves, tail planes, and various assorted sundry parts. Uh, the immediate impression is the engravings very nicely done. It's very fine, but not so fine that it'll be annoying to work with. It's a slight texture to the parts, I don't know if you can hear, but it's not excessive. Actually, it's quite nice. It's looked like to be a main wheelbase there, as your undercarriage legs. Fairly chunky pilot seat with some armrests for comfort some drop tanks and some cameras obviously several versions of this kit out there I guess I'm going to go, go close for you for the recessed panel line detail uh, it is noticeable to me that there is a little bit of flash now this isn't a super up to date kit and you can see the dragon logo here as well just in case you didn't believe me there is a little bit of flash but it's not terribly intrusive and shouldn't be too difficult to clean up so let's not get too excited about it so sprue B bravo we've got wheels we've got nacelles you've got some cockpit stuff there and then the little nose insert for the front it does feature a fairly significant sink mark right here where this tiny step detail is nice one um, and you can see the flow marks in the plastic as well doesn't affect most things but oftentimes when you're doing natural metal stuff that does actually show through and here there's a scar it's a scar in the mould that's 
an attempt has been made to polish that out and it's not entirely successful I don't know if that's translating to film there's a little scar there that that will need rubbing out yeah so wings and, and, and the surface detail here to be honest looks slightly heavier than that on the fuselage but it's not it's not terrible there's your nose leg your nose wheel parts of your rocket to pods and yeah your nacelles essentially again all the moulding it's pretty decent not too much in the way of flash or artifacts on here but there is some it's inevitable with slightly older moulds unfortunately and here you've got the actual rocket pods and some bombage so cannon pod and a cup uh, no that is one of the large type of bombs that these things carry in addition to those things you get a little piece of photo etch which does in fact say DML on it again harking back to the fact that this is a dragon kit and this is for the night fighter aerial array mostly along with the DF loop a couple of other small parts and the transparencies now this I did actually do some googling about the kit because I'm not familiar with the dragon kit that this is a, a print of so I don't know how it builds and none of the reviews I found said anything about it being a tricky build and truthfully it doesn't look one but then I look at these nose parts and I'm slightly dubious but to be fair the the review builds I saw they, they didn't look horrible at the nose so it's probably okay there is again um, a flow mark intruding across this main transparency in the shape of a sort of a diagonal line that looks like a scratch but you'll never polish it out because it's actually in the plastic don't know if it's visible on camera but again it's not significant should it be too noticeable when the model is complete close up in every other sense these are very very nice looking transparencies beautifully polished very clear I'm guessing that this part is actually a camera port for one of the reconnaissance versions and that concludes the plastic parts it's all very competent it doesn't look like there should be any major issues with construction, hopefully. And truthfully, this just re does represent a, a good opportunity to get hold of a kit that, that you're not going to get hold of otherwise. Here we have the instructions then. Now, I'm going to touch upon this a couple of times probably, but note the swastika on the instructions has been coloured in with a marker pen. And the box art doesn't feature a swastika at all. There is obviously a swastika version of the artwork, but for whatever reason they've not used it there and instead chosen to scribble over it with a marker pen. So you've got your sprue layout there, as ever. It's a fold out booklet, and I believe that this is a facsimile of the original dragon instructions, just laid out a little differently. Perfectly clear. It's not a modern style of instructions, but. It's nicely printed, nice quality paper, and it's very very easy to see what you need to do here. Requires no further explanation from me, I don't think. I don't see... Oh, here we go. They're suggesting you put nose weight in the nacelles. Just there. Not in the nose. There would be some room in the nose to put some. And it doesn't tell you how much... It's just a picture of a weight and I realise now that I'm, I'm pointing at something that's off camera, there you go. So put that just there, <laughs> where that circle is. Uh, it doesn't tell you how much. No, because the legend on the front doesn't even include what that weight actually stands for. It's a bit of a bit of an omission. So the same put the weight in the nacelles, which perfectly legitimate place to put it, but it's not that far in front of the main wheels. So. If you put it in there, you're going to need to use more. You would, for me, the most sensible place to put it if there's no room in the extreme nose area is actually just here, just behind this bulkhead that forms the back of the cockpit area because that is fairly well ahead of the wheels. Oh, I sniffed, I'm sorry. And here we go four, two colour schemes included the exciting one and a very much less exciting one. So this one is supposedly. Uh, KG 76 flown by the CO Hauptmann Joseph Regler 
from Selgersdorf in Germany, February 1945. So that's simply an application of uh, winter camo over the top of the original scheme. And the standard scheme flown by Oberleutnant Werner Muffy, Commando Sperling in the Rhine. Yeah, doesn't really tell you much. But otherwise, your standard Luftwaffe colours, which they're saying is. She says I should have looked at this first, shouldn't I? RLM 81, brown violet, 82, light green, and 76, light blue. Your mileage may vary on that. This overspray is RLM 76 rather than white as well, just to note that. Decal sheet itself is very small. Here it is. And note again the use of the marker pen on those swastikas. You can see some mess around those. That's because I experimentally used a, a cotton bud to see if I could remove the marker pen from these uh, and make the decals usable. But I think, although it showed signs of coming off, I think that the decal would be ruined before it becomes usable so and plus you risk damaging the ones around it but aside from that point it's a very standard decal sheet printed by cartograph they look completely serviceable and completely sensible to me a little bit of stencil detail it's quite a basic sheet and has the addition of some internal instrument panel decals which in this scale i think are plenty adequate to be honest so yeah it's 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 competent but the marker pen thing irritates me I'm not gonna lie everyone's got their own I guess standpoint on whether or not swastikas should be shown or included in kits personally I think the censorship of it is a little ridiculous but that's me I realize that other people feel differently about it but I think as a kit manufacturer I know that they're not allowed to supply them to some countries but I think I personally would prefer them to not be included than to have my decal sheet scribbled over with a marker pen. I just find that irritating. But for those of us that live in countries where it's not banned, obviously they can be sought from aftermarket sources and indeed the spares box. So there you go. That's just my mileage and I realise other people have different opinions on that. But overall. I think, and especially for the really rather modest outlay, uh, and with the prices that kits are starting to go for now, it's quite toe curling in some cases. Uh, I think this represents a really a good value for money purchase. Um, it's a very interesting subject. Um, really, almost unbelievable that this thing actually saw service in the Second World War, although limited. It's it's quite remarkable when you stop and think about it. Um, it's a very interesting um, subject, even if the colour schemes aren't that interesting, frankly. But, um, you know, rocket assisted takeoff on a twin jet bomber in 1945, it's, it's incredible. Um, so, yeah, interesting subject, a very, very competent kit by the looks of it, and, and really a very reasonable price. So, I'm, I'm interested to get a couple more of these Hobby 2000 sets and have a look at them over time. Um, but I hope that was useful and, and of some interest to some of you. On a side note, I did buy a new cutting mat to do to do inbox reviews with um, because green cutting mats are so passe, aren't they? Um, <laughs> I thought I'd get something a bit more attractive and I picked this one up off Amazon. It was £10 and I wouldn't normally really bore you talking about a cutting mat but this is double-sided. There's a grey side also. I might have been better off using the grey one for this really, I don't know. It all blends in a little bit, doesn't it? But the markings on the black one are a bit in your face, aren't they? But yeah, this has got angles on it, this side flip on short edge, yeah. This <laughs> this side's got circles and things. But I, I paid ten pounds for this off Amazon and I'm really impressed with the quality of it, honestly. It's it's heavy, it's dense, it's it's really, really nice. So I'm going to put a link in the description area to this on Amazon if anybody needs a cutting mat, particularly if you're not lucky enough to have a dedicated build space, and I know that most people aren't. This is a, a really nice, sturdy cutting mat. Um, there is a slight texture to the finish, but that shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, really nice cutting mat. And on that boring note, <laughs> I'll end the video. I do have 
several more coming up. A uh, quick sneak peek. I've got the Razor Crest, an IBG Dora, I'm a Hobby P51, and I, I'm going to knock everything sideways, but the Rebel Blackbird. I might need to film this one from space because the box is immense, but. I'll put a preview shot of those up on the community area, but uh, yeah, I've got a couple of reviews coming up and the next instalment of the Foxy Killer build should be with you imminently, if not at the same time as this one, or slightly before, so yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, I hope everyone's well, uh, and then a final point, because of my job, I'm forbidden from uh, commenting or posting about current events, so I will not, however, I think... It, even more than usual, please look after yourselves and look after each other. Genesis out.